Wait, but I will say, the back. but I will say, um, if anyone's looking for something to do that's Christmassy with their families, go to our website, thechurchnashville.com. <laughs> and Kevin just did a blog on the ABCCM stuff that's going on. And the calendar is up to date. And the calendar is up to date. Oh my, the event calendar is up to date. Is it up to date in the app also? It's the same calendar. Yeah. Second, does it say on the calendar when everybody's supposed to have their stuff back for the angel? December 17th. Cool. Okay, so that's the morning we're having our, our special yes. service. Yes, our special Christmas service on the 17th. I love it. So good. Now, in other news, when I was coming home Monday evening after dark, and I got to the top of the church drive, there was a very <coughs> obese bear, lumbering kind of <laughs> boom, 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 across the church parking lot. And I eased back. I was in my truck, but I eased back. And I'm going to tell you why, church family, because this is important. I do not want... <coughs> A 500 pound bear to die of a heart attack in our church parking lot because yeah. how do you move yeah. right. a 500 pound bear yeah. so I backed off and I said it's okay I'm not, and I eased as far over and that bear got so tired by the time it got to the front door it was so tired and it just went in between the bushes and just waited between the church bushes until I left oh. So that brings me to my second announcement. Be careful, when you come to Be careful if you come to church in the dark and kiss there's a bear in the bushes. And you came in the door? You got out of your truck? Oh, no, honey. I wasn't coming in this building. I was like, oh, no. The devil is alive. I can use a different door. <laughs> there's a whole lot of doors into this church. <laughs> I got a key to all of them. <laughs> Anyways, but it wasn't there tonight. So that's good. <laughs> he was up at my house because he could smell my cooking. Yeah. Just for a little while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something smells good up here. You also didn't want to have to tell your mama that you had killed one no. of the bears. No. I don't know that there's an agency for that. <laughs> yes, gross funeral home. I have a, I have a dead relative. In the parking lot. <laughs> I saw it's a bear. Well, well, I saw a well, funeral well. services for horses on the way to church. Today. Oh, they really? Were able to help. Uh, wow, <laughs> funeral yeah, services uh, for horses. So, horse area. Well, I mean, you would have to do something, right? Mm -hmm. When something weighs that just, much, you can't just be like, well, let's put them in the truck. <laughs> Not going to happen. Anyways, well, let's take some prayer requests before this gets completely out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> what would y'all like to pray about? Kevo? Um, I talked to Mark this morning. Yeah. And he um, is at home. He's doing some of the things they told him to do. He's changing his diet. But he's about to start um, the official therapies uh, real soon. Um, they have changed their um, time to go back to Portugal for May. Wow. And they've also changed the time of the house completion to May as well. Um, there's so much that they're uncertain about, including the finances of all this. There's some opportunities for some grants and, and, and things to help pay for all this. But there's so much that's kind of up in the air for them. Uh, so just keep the two of them in your prayers. Um, we talked to Javi this afternoon, and there's some huge things that. God is leading them into as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so just keep the Mendoza in your prayers, as well as our folks mm -hmm. in uh, in Honduras, in our folks in Nepal. Um, we got word that uh, three of the pastors lost their homes in the earthquake also. Oh, and so they have kids, they're sleeping under, under tarps. Um, and so um, we'll see what we can do. I'm sending out word to some of the MHAC churches to see if if they can help as well. But um, God's always on time, so we'll see what, what, uh, what happens with all that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some, uh, <laughs> some things that God's asked me to, to do that's outside my wheelhouse, so just uh, be praying for me about that. Okay. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. All right. And 
If you could um, pray for Saya, the little 12-year-old who's run away, but everyone believes he ran to his mother, but we really <coughs> went to the mother's house, no one answered the door, so we don't know that the child is safe, and his six, 17-year-old <coughs> sister ran away last month. Same thing, they think they went back to the mom, but you know, I think everybody would just feel better if they knew for sure. Yes. Yeah. So just pray that either they will contact somebody or the mother will contact someone yeah. or the police will actually take this serious. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mindy? <coughs> pray for um, Lexi's household. There's way more going on than we have time to listen to. Um, but the Lord knows all of it. And it's pretty serious. Um, so just lift all of them up, especially mm -hmm. Peyton and Leanne. Um, um, pray for my coworker Michelle. She left this afternoon about 1.30 to go to the ER. Um, she's been dealing with um, like kidney infection and stones and everything, and it just kept moving up and getting more and more uncomfortable. Um, so she went to go make sure she's not like going septic or anything like that. Um, so pray for her, her name's Michelle. Um, as always, pray for Tori, pray for guidance and direction for me um, in a couple of different things. <laughs> um, anyways, just pray for guidance and direction because I, I, think I, I think I know what God wants me to do, um, but I, I, I believe that there's some things that I need to do before I can follow through with that and that that's just the things, the pieces would fall into place to be able to do that. Um, um, pray for our family, our household. Um, and I think that was it. <coughs> oh, and the um, yes. stuff going on. For you and Ma. <coughs> Y'all got that. No, you're fine. No, it's don't, no, don't, 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 don't leave me. Mom, don't, mom, don't leave me. I'm just picking up my glasses. December is um, the state EOC that I'm required to take at the school. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would say four hours of each period. Okay. Let's be from the EOC. In Jesus' name. The Lord can bring all things to your remembrance that are needful. Yeah. 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 But you've got to remember them first. Sister <laughs> <It's kind of laughs> <memorable. laughs> Karen? <coughs> Diane and Terry? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's pray for Diane and Terry. Yeah. I do not. I have not heard from them. We haven't seen Miss Carol. I forget what. She was out of town for a little bit. She was there yeah. Sunday. She was there Sunday. Oh, she yeah. was? Yes, yeah, she made it back. But she was in Florida for a while. Okay. And hopefully she doesn't regret coming back. <laughs> it got cold. <laughs> Go ahead, John. Yeah. Well, Judy went up north and visited all her friends. And one of her friends is a neat freak. Everything's going to be perfect. She went to visit her and the house is a mess. She can't take care of herself. She's lost her mind. She loses her mind. She doesn't know what's going on around oh, her. No. She, she keeps repeating stuff and she's oh. just losing it. She thinks she's doing just fine. She doesn't need any help. You know? yeah. I mean, she <coughs> turned open a refrigerator as food that's two months old. You know, yeah. Oh, and man. The bad part is she doesn't realize she needs help. Yeah. She won't accept any. Yeah. And there's some people. That you connected with the help, she just she won't accept it. Oh so man, she needs she, she needs to accept it before something serious happens. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Let's pray for Jude's friend yeah. for sure. Yeah. Joan. Yeah. Joan, yeah. Let's pray for Joan. Um, we had uh, a co one of my staff members uh, was having his heart was just racing. Um, he's very young. He's in his twenties. I had to take him to the urgent care and then. To the emergency room 
uh, on Monday, and thank the Lord, they, you know, basically did some tests and everything, and then referred him to a cardiologist, and they actually made him an appointment at the cardiologist, which oh. was shocking to me. They didn't just say, hey, you'll follow up. They actually made the appointment because they wanted to make sure he did it, so please remember, uh, Nick, he just needs the Lord to literally touch his heart. Yes. Yes. Somebody else, my brother-in-law just found out yesterday. He had a minor stroke. And he's back home. And he seems to be pretty good, but he's not all there. He, he can't remember words. He does crossword puzzles. He can't remember any words at all. You know, he's a, and just, he needs to get a full recovery. Yes. Yes. <coughs> My mom, Anna. Um, tomorrow, my brother Dave is supposed to go to the facility that she's at, and it's going to be three different people representing three different departments that are part of this meeting that they're having um, about mom. She's 86 pounds, and she walks with PT all around the outside of the facility. So they're like, well, there's nothing else we can do with her. <laughs> so they're talking about releasing her. Um, Dave would like them to keep her the next the next 15 days to give time to kind of figure out where she's going to go next. She yeah. wants to go home. We don't feel like she should be there by herself. Um, that's like an hour and a half away from where Dave is with yeah. the traffic picking up now at this time of year. So, um, so we don't know there's a lot going on there. Yeah. Um, and um, we don't want to totally overrule her, but we don't want her to be alone. Right. <laughs> so, I understand. Um, don't know yet. Um, and uh, she went to see, she was brought to see my stepdad, and she wasn't happy with his care. Well, he doesn't know the difference from anything. He can't see. He's getting fed. He likes the food. Um, so generally, you know, he's pretty happy yeah. um, that, you know, she's used to taking right. care of him herself. So nothing's nothing, going to be as good as what she did. Right, that, nothing no, was going never. to be good. Um, so please pray for that. And then um, there's a family situation that I can't give specifics on that I'd like you to pray for. Um, it's something that's going to take a while to resolve. <coughs> and, um, and my, and my kids need to be saved. Yes. That's a big part of this. Yes, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. Kathy. Kitty. Yes, let's remember Kitty, because she's used to hearing all the things. Kathy. I forgot to mention my sister-in-law, Michelle, had surgery <coughs> today, um, hysterectomy to take, deal with cancer. So just pray that the, it was successful and that all the cancer was removed. Yes, in Jesus' name. And um, I think the praise report and a prayer request, um, your uh, move into a new role in the ministry at ABCDM. Oh, thank you, baby. So last night we had our general assembly, and they voted. They had the nominating committee had nominated me to be the vice chair for our new chairperson, and that was approved. Wow. Um, this week, so I am gonna have to have y'all call me Madam Vice Chair for the next three years. <laughs> so I'm just saying, and then for, for the three years after that, Madam Chair. Mostly, I want you to call me Madam. Mother Wilson says, "Wait a second, you don't need another thing to do." <laughs> I know what you mean. I, it, we did pray, Kevin and I were praying about it when they approached me with the nomination a couple, I guess a month or so ago. Um, and there's a lot of things in my life that I have learned to say no to because uh, thankfully for uh, Masco and, and the class that we took with him and Jerry just blessed us with time management. <coughs> if there's anything else time management teaches you, it's to say no. Yeah. I do not have time and no. Nobody knows. <laughs> But this was one thing that I was like, okay, God, um, you know what, what we're dealing with here. And along those lines, I would like to give a praise report. Um, the Lord has shifted a whole lot of personnel stuff in my job.
my staff members in order to make space for me to have more help for my personal job. You know, I have a lot of employees, but they have their jobs to do, right? And the Lord has made a way for just to give me favor in so many areas so that now one of my people who's been with me for several years is now taking on some of the stuff that I was having to do every week or every day. It's just stuff that, you know, data entry stuff and reports and things like that. And she's just taking that stuff on. And I told her today, I was like, Lee, you won't be able to receive this because you're just not able. But I'm going to articulate it. And that is, you have been such a blessing to me the last three weeks. And I'm looking so forward to the blessing you're going to continue to be going forward in the next few years. And um, she's so precious. She just is such a sweet lady. So just, y'all, whenever you think about Lee, just bless her. Because she's a blessing to me, for sure. And God is good. Deb? Um, Gail and Asher <clears throat> have been sick a lot. And um, Mike and Marianne, family, her folks, and yeah. so on. Um, and I remembered a classmate of mine, um, Marianne, her husband, Jose, has been going through chemo and all of that stuff. And they spent quite a lot of Thanksgiving in the ER. Um, so please keep them in prayer. Yeah, yeah, that's what Mimi knows for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Miss Galen. Asher? Yes. Mother Wilson? Yes, my, my uh, daughter in law in London <coughs> just found out she has uh, uh, breast cancer, but uh, type, just one, you know, okay. type one. Okay. But uh, she wants to have the whole bus removed. So I called again today to, you know, I've been praying and whatever, but she had made up her mind, and so she says she can't worry about it later, and, you know, she's 60, yeah. and whatever, so I just want to pray really for her salvation. In Jesus' yeah. name, amen. That's good. Yeah, just remember her for sure. Mary Ann is asking prayer for her family. Okay, yes. Just for her what? Her grandma. Her family. Oh. I also remember TJ, he's going to be getting out in a couple That's days. right. Yeah. It's just it's two this weeks way. till TJ really? gets out. Wow. of jail <coughs> in um, Idaho and he'll be back with us and uh, it'll be so great to have him to have him back in our church family yeah. What a, just, a, just a wild couple of years he's had and it's just so cool the way the Lord brought him into our church family and mm -hmm. spoke to his heart in all of that and him going to turn himself in because he was like that's what the Lord wants me to do and that's so, you know when you see people being obedient and it is not easy no. that is just it just strengthens your faith in what God can do because he can do anything he can do anything so let's take these needs to the Lord in prayer won't we Lord thank you so much for all of these things because they look so big from where we are because we are so small but Lord Jesus, you are bigger than whatever's going on in Joan's memory and her mind. You are bigger, Lord Jesus, than the things that are affecting John's brother-in-law. You, Lord Jesus, are bigger, Lord, than the cancer that is trying, Lord Jesus, to instill fear, Lord, in Mother Wilson's daughter-in-law. Lord Jesus, you are bigger than the sickness that is trying to come against Mindy and Nancy and Clay and Asher and Gail. And all these that are suffering from sinus issues, Lord Jesus, and things. Lord, we just, we ask that you would move, Lord, and minister, Lord Jesus, to and through each of these folks, that they could see your hand at work. We thank you for touching our co-workers. We thank you, Lord, for moving in all of these beautiful praise reports of what you're doing. We know that you have a plan for Anna. We know, Lord, that she's going to find the right place and have peace about it. And that she's going to be able to have harmony in her family. That you are going to move in Deb's family, Lord Jesus. That you're going to move, Lord, in such a mighty way. In each of these requests, Lord. And that you're going to bless Alicia, Lord, and her troop, Lord, as they are in the Christmas parade in Hendersonville. And we thank you and give you all the praise and glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Y'all, I have missed the book of Acts. <laughs> Amen. So I'm excited for us to be going to Acts 27. 
Well, we've got quite a few verses to cover here tonight because we're doubling up since we had um, Cheryl with us on one Wednesday night. And what a blessing she was to give us all that excellent information yes. about um, you know, the different <coughs> services we can get through. Um, uh, well, the Council on Aging and other services like that. That's such a great resource. All right, so Acts 27, we're going to read verses 1 through 26. Now, I'll remind you that we're leaving. So Paul is being finally sent to Rome. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of the Augustus band. And entering into a ship of Adramitium, we launched, meaning to sail by the coasts of Asia, one Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day, we touched at Sidon. And Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. Kevin's giggling because he's thinking, refresh yourself, refresh yourself. That's what that's one of our servers told us on vacation. He said, refresh yourself, refresh yourself. That's right. And when we had launched from thence, and that was very gracious of him to do, you know, for this guy, he's he's like you know, the centurion. He said, you know what, just go see your friends. It's fine. Mm -hmm. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus because the winds were contrary. Well, we felt that yesterday, didn't we? Yeah. And when we had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against Cnidus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Sal Salmone, and hardly passing it, came into a place that is called the Fair Havens, nigh unto where was the city of Lycia. Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And that's going to be the last time he does that. <laughs> and because the haven was not commodious to winter, in, to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Finis and there to winter, which is a haven of Crete, and lieth towards the southwest and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, Supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing fence, they sailed close by Crete. Now I'm going to tell you all something. When the Lord tells you to do something or to not do something, it don't matter how soft that wind is. You better not do it. But not long after, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocladon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up unto the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Clouda, we had so much work to come by the boat, which, when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship, which is those just big straps that they run under the ship to just hold it together. <laughs> um, and fearing, lest they should fall into the quicksands, they struck sail, and so were driven. And we being <coughs> exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they, lighted the sh they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. Three days they've been in this storm. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, 
and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. That sounds horrible. Many days. Mm. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, I told you so. <laughs> he said, you should have listened to me and not loosed from creed and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall no, be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Say, fear not, Paul. Isn't that awesome, y'all? Mm -hmm. You must be brought before Caesar. And God has given to you everyone that sails with you. Wow. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. How be it, we must be cast upon a certain island. Wow. Whew, that's like drinking from a fire hose, y'all. <laughs> My goodness. What in the world? What jumps out at you about this passage of Scripture? I'm so glad I was not on that boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you are not kidding, Dad. This is, this is another prime example of the people around Paul being partakers of his grace. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And isn't it interesting that in order for them to be partakers of his grace, he had to be a partaker of their storm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 <laughs> This wasn't a small ship. These had 250 people on this ship. It wasn't a small little ship. Right. You know, I mean, it was a lot of people crammed in one place. Yeah. And talk about how it says what, when they were in Haven that it was a safe place to be. Yes. There was, there's no harbor. Right. But the problem that these people had is they wanted to leave because they couldn't winter there. There's no, there's no supplies there. Yeah. And five miles away, a little town, but there's just no food for them. Right. And so it says, <clears throat> the more part advised, they, they voted, apparently. Mm -hmm. And they, they all decided they would go in spite of what Paul's saying. Yeah. So <clears throat> they go against what Paul's advice is, and the bottom line is they live because it was true, and they learned something. Mm -hmm. That's good, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Another thing is Luke was with them. Yes. Because he's saying we. We, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. I'm really glad he knew how to swim. Oh, man. Less or at least to hold on to a board. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So he could write this letter. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And isn't it interesting, y'all, how many details they give? You know, the first uh, several verses um, gives you some real specific information about who is with them. Okay. The reason that that's the reason that Luke writes these things, he's writing these things after they happen. He's writing these things like this because these are going to be interesting to Theophilus, his friend, and anyone else that Theophilus shares this letter with. So he mentions Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica. He mentions, of course, Julius. And then he mentions all these places that they went. He gives very specific, I mean, you can draw a line where that ship went until it went, got caught in the storm and they couldn't see the stars or, or the moon or the sun or any, get their bearings in any way. And it's interesting that because Luke was there, that he took such meticulous notes, the way you would if you were uh, putting down a historic <coughs> occurrence, he didn't write this like, oh man, we had a weird trip and we got caught in a storm. He understood, probably through the unction of the Holy Ghost, that it was necessary to put down details like this because those are things that people bear witness to. Mm -hmm. You know? All right, so, Deb. Um, they did not 
this was not a passenger ship. It was right. a cargo ship. Yeah. I mean, they didn't have comfortable mm -hmm. berths or, you know, hammocks or whatever. Um, you know, he mentioned that, you know, they were probably packed in. If you were a prisoner and you were being transported, would you expect two <coughs> friends to be allowed to go with you? You would not. So, <coughs> Luke being a doctor possibly could have gotten bored as, as right. a doctor. Don't know. Or Romans were allowed two slaves. That was a privilege that they had. Those two men could have gone as Paul's slaves. Wow, what an interesting which would have been concept. Service. Uh, and it doesn't tell us right how they were. Able they to shouldn't have been there. Right. You know. Well, as far as Aristarchus, he was a fellow prisoner because he's talked about again in Philippians. Wow. I think it's Philippians. He said, "Salute my my fellow prisoner." Aristarchus saluted you. Yeah. <clears throat> so his relationship continued with this prisoner. <clears throat> he was sending letters to the churches, which makes you think he was a believer. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah. You wonder when it says that he perceived that the voyage would be damaging. Mm -hmm. We don't know if the Lord spoke to him or the fact that he'd been shipwrecked three times and he could see the circumstances. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. I don't know, but I love that the Lord stood by him. That's not the first time that the Lord did that. You know, the Lord did that. Whenever Paul was at his lowest point, y'all remember when he was, he had been beat and they and that mob had tried to get him and all that stuff had happened. He got thrown in jail. And the and the and the Bible said the Lord stood by him in the night mm -hmm. and said, Be of good cheer. You are going to be a witness unto me. And here again, in this dark place, and this, and it had to be feeling some kind of way. God was gracious, as Debbie pointed out, to let his friends go with him. But still, when you think you're all going to die, you know, and it might be horrible and take a while, um, it's it's just the Lord stood by him, you know. Also, it's interesting that Paul had, you know, Paul really was very compassionate towards people. He would get aggravated and say some pretty <laughs> rough stuff sometimes, but he was very compassionate towards people. And I think that it's so cool that the Lord said, I'm going to spare every life on this ship for you. They should have known better. These people have been sailing the seven seas since you was born. But you know what? I'm going to save them anyway. I think that's so cool, y'all. God is so gracious. I think it's convenient that Luke, the physician, is available for him because you're right, he's in pretty rough shape right now. Yeah, he's right. He's got aches and pains that don't go away. Yeah, right. There's only so much overnighting you can do in those cold stone prison cells and caves and things before the aches set in, huh? All right. So, Kevin. Um, it's, it's amazing to see what all that God does to set up Paul for testimony mm -hmm. and for people to, to believe in that testimony. Yes. Because he, he, like he said, oh, it's not going to be a good trip. Right. And sure enough, it wasn't. And then when he spoke again after the angel talked to him, they were more apt to believe him. They were. Point. And for him, as he's walking through it, you know, God's saying, you're going to make it through this. And it sure doesn't feel like that when you're, in a, you know, going through a shipwreck mm -hmm. and all the crap you got to go through. And so it's not like he just got knocked overboard and didn't do anything because God's going to save him. He still had to swim for his life. Right. And... You know, you're in next feel like you're drowning, you're getting pushed <coughs> underwater. And, and you'll all learn stuff. all about that next week <laughs> in our Wednesday night Bible class. Right. But it's, a, it's God is, is God, I'm looking at Mark and Laura right now and all that yes. they're going through. Yeah. And what is God setting them up for? Mm -hmm. And each of us are walking through whatever in our lives. And what's God setting us up for? Not just for our testimony, but... For that next part of our journey mm -hmm. and how we witness through that as well. It's got a it's got a all encompassing 
Well, and what you were saying, baby, also made me think about, you know, so Paul had such a rough time in the lead up to being in the care of Festus and then Felix and Agrippa. But the way that they present it is it almost seems like he was kind of a sideshow for them. So you get the impression that he actually was very well treated by these, because they thought he was interesting. Now he had been beat half to death and all kinds of, treated all kinds of ways by these soldiers, but then he struck their interest and God, you know, held, oh, he was prisoner, but it's like the Lord was giving a, a moment for him to regain his strength and get back to a place where he could sustain what it took to get across this next thing because the Lord had yet some people that he wanted to minister to. Times of refreshing come to him on a regular basis. Times of refreshing. That's really good. I like that. Times of refreshing. Refresh yourself. Go see your friends. Refresh yourself. We all knew he wasn't a criminal. Mm -hmm. Right. uh, Even even his his guard that's in charge of he let him go ashore and visit mm-hmm. people. You know, he's not going to do anything. He's got a criminal. You know? Right. And so, you're right. He got refreshed because his guard gave him the freedom. And he actually had the same freedom when he's being held yeah. temporarily. You know? Yeah. So it wasn't like he was a criminal at all. Right. He wasn't treated that way at all. No. He was treated more like a visitor who couldn't leave. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Bridget. House rust, you know. <laughs> Bridget? <coughs> the Lord gave him favor, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. in whatever circumstance he was in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that favor that he received helped him get through those dark times, but it also shored him up enough that he could also support those around him, even though they weren't listening. Right. They weren't receiving. Mm-hmm. But he, he didn't lose his patience with them. So he sh- basically showed them favor. Yeah. Also. Yeah, he did. He really did. Man, if you think it doesn't matter who your friends are, this story will change your mind. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, it's just so good. So um, anything else you want to point out that <coughs> God was up to here? <coughs> God had a plan. So even though Paul counseled them, he says in Corinthians that he was shipwrecked three times. Um, We're assuming this is the last one because after that he's he's in Rome. But um, so he had some knowledge of that. But God had another plan. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into that throughout December. But he had favor in every other way, but they didn't listen to that counsel because God had other plans. Yeah, right, exactly. That's exactly right. Um, I'm, we do have free will, but let me assure you that our free will always works in God's favor. It doesn't always work in our favor. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't always work in the ways that would be easier for us to be favored, but God works everything out for his purpose and his purpose is what's good for us even when we don't understand it you know, he's, he's asleep in his ship they got to wake him up during this crisis well why he's assured he's going to go to Rome he knows that no matter what else going to. there's bumps along the way but he knows he's going to be in Rome right in spite of whatever goes on around him yeah and his mother Wilson just said it reminds you of Jesus asleep in the boat in the storm because when Jesus says he's going to the other side, he's going to the other side. You know, it's so sad, you know, when you, we don't think that, but, you know, your faith will grow until you can realize to believe it. When things happen in your life, and it's not what you think is good, but what gives me, I want to see what God's going to do with that. Yeah. So I'm very inquisitive. I like to. I say, God, I like to see how you gonna work this out. It ain't working for my good right now, but I'm waiting to yeah. see. And when I'm waiting to see how it's gonna work out, mm-hmm. it's gonna work out. That's and it's for my good and His glory. Yeah. But the exciting to see in your trouble how it's gonna work out. Yeah. That gives you something to look forward to. We believers, Christ lives in us. Yes, Amen. So we we got to look forward to when we're doing something that. 
that is not good in our lives yeah. to see how that act comes. Because you know it's going to be good. Yes, you know it's going to be good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's good stuff. All right. Well, let's move into sin to avoid. Disobedience. That was just an issue. Disobedience. I have to get it out quick. Yeah. Yeah. And we, like, we've all had that, right? Where we've, we've experienced disobedience in our lives and, and things got wrong. Yeah. You know. Karen? Um, it goes along with Bridget's um, not listening to the man of God. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah. That's good. <coughs> you think pride? Yeah, I definitely think so. Because these folks were like, what does this guy know? He's like, he was a Pharisee and now he's a preacher. He don't know the sea. <laughs> Whoa, your Rockladon had a say in that. <laughs> oh. All right, well, what about promises to claim? <laughs> my, board is, my board's sitting on the floor and I'm like I can't remember what the P is promises to claim <laughs> times of refreshing yeah. yes thank you Lord Jesus for times of refreshing when God says that you're going to reach that destination you're going to reach it yes. that's right that is it and there is nothing that can stop it not hell or high water. But, and he really went through both here. But be careful yeah. making too many plans on the way. All <laughs> right. Karen. Um, I've got now. Um, time for prayer. For now. Yeah. The time for prayer. Yes. Yes. We, yes. We've got to take that time. Yeah. You know, it, it, Paul could have been so upset that he didn't pay attention to the fact that the Lord was standing right by him. And I, I think for myself, especially when I'm distraught um, and emotional about something like upset, angry, hurt, mm -hmm. that I forget to recognize there is no place that I go that the Lord is not standing by me. Mm -hmm. He has always stood by me through everything, mm -hmm. even the things that God didn't want me <coughs> to put myself through. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. still showed up anyway. You know? Yeah. Sister Denise always was so cute. When the littles were misbehaving, yeah. she'd always say, Jesus is watching. <laughs> Jesus is watching. <laughs> right. And Jesus sees you doing that. Jesus sees you. And we have a little plastic Jesus face that is hanging on the corner of the pantry door in the kitchen. And so sometimes when you close the pantry door, you look up and you go, whoa. And Jesus is going, I saw that. <laughs> Whew, Jesus saw that. <laughs> so we're going to be able to go against what God has planned. He expects consequences. Right? All right. So if you want to you fight, fight with him, you can lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's not a winning battle that you can that you can't do that. Well, what about examples to follow? Be obedient. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. To listen. To listen. Recognize that even in the middle of the storm, God's in control. Amen. 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 Yeah. 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 It does seem like when Paul stood forth to give this, it does seem like up to this point, he didn't know if everyone was going to die because he said at the beginning of this, before they left, he said, hey, yeah, things are going to get rough. Like he said, we shouldn't leave. There's going to be much hurt and much damage, not only to the lading in the ship, but also of our lives. So he really believed, and as John pointed out earlier, you know, it doesn't sound like necessarily that was the Holy Ghost telling him that so much as it was him recognizing, hey, I don't have a good feeling about this. Don't look good. Like, I've sailed in this kind of weather before, and yeah, we wrecked. Done that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's so cool though that in the midst of that, he was sensitive to listening to the spirit of the Lord, and and able to give those words. 
you know, able to talk to them. Bridget? So it makes you wonder if the first was just as natural fear or understanding, if that's why the Lord allowed those people not to listen to him. Mm. Because <coughs> it should be coming from the Lord. You know, oh, okay. You I got see, you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I never caught that he, the first time he didn't say right. what the Lord told right. him. Right, he didn't he say that. I perceive. Right, he's like, I'm observing this, yeah. and this don't look too good to me. So, so in defense of the people then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So it's interesting, though, when he said that the Lord stood by him and told him. Then they, they sort of listened. Yeah. So... They laid aside that pride that D.W. Yeah. brought up and yeah. was like, wait a second. Yeah. Let's let's listen to the man. Let's right. see. Let's, let's see what the Lord's told him. Right. Because we need a word right now. <laughs> we need a word. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Apparently not. Apparently they had even less they had even less life boats than the Titanic, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. They're crammed into this ship, and for refreshment, Paul is allowed to go spend time with his Christian brothers. Yeah. You know, not go off by himself and have a little peace and quiet. This, mm -hmm. this is what, you know, what was important was that he got some refreshment from his Christian brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah. that's really good. I, I love it that you brought that up, Deb. You know, we... We talk about, sometimes we talk about, you know, introversion versus extroversion and everything. And, you know, as far as your personality is concerned, like some people really draw energy from hanging out with a bunch of people. And some people are kind of drained by spending time with a bunch of people. But it doesn't matter what your natural personality is. When you come into fellowship with the body of Christ, it strengthens and refreshes you. And them. Absolutely. And them. Mm -hmm. And them. It's so good. It's so good. So, yeah, you're right. Paul was like, hey, I, if I can go do something, I don't want to go off and be by myself. You know, that, that's what Jesus would have done. Jesus would have been like, y'all stay here. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> Jesus is like, I've had enough of y'all. I need a minute. He said, let's go be, let's go, let me, let me go see these folks. Let me go encourage and be encouraged. So good. So good. Amen. Love it. All right. What about, y'all? can y'all think of any other examples before we hit commands to follow? Yeah. This fellow, Macedonian. Yeah. He was on his trip voluntarily. He wasn't a part of, of, of the, uh, the charges and stuff. Actually, he and, was, and John. He it was. Meant, yeah, it mentions him later in... I think it's in Philippians. It, it, Paul calls him a fellow prisoner. Aristarchus, a fellow prisoner. Isn't that crazy? I thought, they, I thought he was. Let me see where, it, where it's at. I, he said, my, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluted you. Oh, uh, it might be Colossians. Colossians, Colossians 4.10. Let's try that. And Marcus' sister son, DeBarc, to. He's in, he's in Philemon, 124. He's in yeah, Acts okay, so in three different places. Colossians 4.10, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluted to you, and Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom you received commandments. If he come unto you, receive him. Interesting. Yeah, I thought he was there as encouragement because he was a strong supporter. You know? Well, that's what's so interesting is that... I don't know if he was a strong supporter at that time, but certainly they were friends. Uh, bless you. Because they he shows up in several of Paul's letters, uh, but he does call him a fellow prisoner. He also calls him a fellow laborer in other places. That's very cool. All right, that's neat. Did y'all pull up the, the 24th verse of Philemon to see? Oh, I've got it. Oh, it just lists them. Mm -hmm. There salute the Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. Um, and that was the, 
the letter that he wrote uh, to Philemon by Onesimus. It was basically about Onesimus. Uh, this must have been when Demas was still living for the Lord. And he had, uh, Paul had not yet committed him to Satan. <laughs> he said, I'm so aggravated with that Demas who had loved this present world. I have delivered him onto Satan. You can have him. I'm so tired of him. So Paul had his moments when he wasn't as loving, perhaps. But, <laughs> and what's interesting is there were times when he was that way, and the Lord left that in his word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It says to be angry and sin not. It doesn't say Don't you're never going to be angry. The Lord knew we was going to be angry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, what about commands to keep? Can you discern from this some commands to keep? Listen to the Lord. Listen to the Lord. Yeah. Um, as Karen said, take that time to pray. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, it's crazy. Yes, we're tossing and turning, and, mm -hmm. but, like, you got to pray. You got to listen. Isn't it interesting that the first thing that Paul says after he says, I told you so, now cheer up. <laughs> he gave them a command. He said, everybody, put on a happy face. <laughs> and I mean, you know, he probably was having to scream through the I know. storm. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> ship's going to sink. Take a nap so you're ready for it. <laughs> That's right. Take a nap. <laughs> when things are going wrong, you know what? Just pray and then take a nap. And just see what happens. That's good. That's good advice, man. That's a command that I'm going to keep. <laughs> Boy, I had a good nap on Sunday. I, I fell asleep after the Panthers game, and it must have been about 3.30 when I drifted off. And I woke up at 5.40, <laughs> and, and it was dark outside, and I come climbing out of my recliner, and, and Kevin is sitting there on the couch. We're sitting, literally, I can touch his feet with my hand. He, we sit right there next to each other. And he looks over his reading glasses and said, do I need to start waking you up? <laughs> I was like, oh man, it's so late. I was, and then I was like, no. <laughs> no, that was real good. That was a real good nap. <laughs> You're having a good dream. Don't get any <laughs> That's right. Don't, we don't want to interrupt it. <laughs> any other commands to keep or final, <coughs> or final thoughts? Yes, he is. No matter what the storm is, wait it out. God is at the end of the storm. And you know, there were other disciples that were more experienced for that kind of storm. I mean, Peter was a fisherman. Right? You know, and sometimes we look at our storm and think, you know, so and so could be handling this a lot. Oh, that's for sure. Not <laughs> right, yeah. You know, but that's not who's there. You're right. there. Yeah. And you lean, in your weakness, you lean into his strength. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul was raised, somebody brought out, it might have been John brought out before that Paul was raised well off. I mean, he was taught at the feet of Gamaliel. Gamaliel yeah. And he, he was not used to, at an earlier age to, you know, to these kind of hardships. Mm -hmm. And he had really mm -hmm. been through a lot. Yeah. And then after going through all of that <coughs> and being in prison for two years, yep. he has to face the storm. Yes. So 
it, it, you know, it's times like that that you just have to lean in the Lord. And, yeah. And let your weakness just be overcome by His strength. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't. It took all things Jesus had to go through. You know what I mean? Same mm -hmm. comparison. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That comparison. Yeah. Um, and it, it's interesting how the Lord shapes our lives. You know, the Lord doesn't put the fiery furnace at the beginning of your relationship with Him. Right. You know, you face a and lot of things. it's not at the end. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, Mom. Yeah. And hopefully it's not at the end. But you know, the Lord knows how to grow us. You know? And so our battles do look different today than they looked 10 years ago. And to tell us as much of this plan as we're ready for at that time. Yes. Right. That is right. <laughs> yes. Another good takeaway is that in, even in our foolishness and our ignorance and our sometimes just blatant disobedience, yeah. thinking that we can do it better or we know better or I know I heard that, but I'm going to do it this way anyways. <laughs> right. God's still going to get you to your destination. He's still going to get you through, even though you're going to go through mm -hmm. the storms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Through that. Sometimes we go through the storms just so it can strengthen us and, and teach us something. Right. And that's part of his plan. But sometimes we go through the storms because of our disobedience. Right. right. But he's still going to get us through to the other side. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, think about Jonah. I mean, Jonah was just <laughs> trying to get away. It's just really straight up disobedience. Yeah. And they were like, man, we do not, we've thrown everything out. We do not know what's going on. He's like, it's me. And they were like, well, we don't want to throw you out. But, <laughs> but maybe we should. <laughs> Goodness gracious. All right. Well, this has been so fun getting right back into it. I'm looking forward to this, this next chapter and a half. It's so delicious. So good. So, all of you out there in internet land, join us next week at 6.30 for the second part of Acts 27. Friday. Oh, and I'm glad you said that, Deb. Friday night is first Friday. If anybody can come out and join us at the VRQ at 4.30, we're going to be <coughs> chopping some veggies, slinging some skeddies, or whatever they cook for dinner, and just generally grinning. At veterans, that's mostly what we do there is just smile at people and ask them how their day is. And I say really hilarious things, but y'all are not, you're not <laughs> obligated to do that. <laughs> but we do have a good time. We do have a good time there. Yeah, for sure. Um, as we close out, y'all please pray for Paula's dad, Riley. Um, Paula and Larry come. Um, periodically and sit with Mother Wilson and y'all met Riley, Paula's dad, and he's such a sweet, such a sweet man. He's so precious. He's a Vietnam vet and they put him on palliative care. They actually moved him into hospice care today. He's going he's gonna to stay home, but um, hospice is coming in. I got to spend some time with him on Monday night and you know, God is so gracious to put in our church family people for us to love. And when you see them just blossom in that love, and Riley's one of those people. He's waving his, he was telling me, he said, I just love that church. He said, I told Paula, I don't want to go to any church except that church. He said, that's my church. He loves you. He does. He's so sweet. He said, I love you. He said, I tell everybody about my pastor. And they said, what do you think about women pastors? And he said, I think there ought to be more of them. <laughs> Amen. He's so precious. He's so precious. But he does. He loves y'all so much. He just loves it. He loves the singing and he loves the fellowship. He just, he loves y'all. And um, just keep him in prayer. Um, he's ready to be, he's ready to not, to, he's ready to be at peace. Yeah. He just, he's ready to go home. He's so tired. Yes. 
And so um, just keep him in prayer, and especially keep Paula and Larry in your prayers because this is hard for them and their family. And just let the Lord mm -hmm. just love them real big. And um, if anybody would like Paula's number, I'm happy to give that to you. You can reach out to her and just tell mm -hmm. her you love her and that you're praying for her. I know she would appreciate that mm -hmm. at this time. Anyways, mm -hmm. so if y'all would remember that. All right. Is anything else happening this weekend? We just have the VRQ this weekend, right? Uh, All right. You can look it up on the app. And see. Good deal. Yeah. That's right. On the calendar. Oh, that's right. In the app on the calendar, you can see all the things that are going on. But you all know that already. <laughs> all right, let's take a moment and just thank the Lord for this time together. Lord, you are so, so kind to us, Lord. You are so gracious to give us this. Thank you, Lord, for this sacred moment that we come together and we study your word and it just unfolds before us like just un unfolding petals on a flower and it's so beautiful, and it's so deep, and it touches our hearts, and it changes us. And we are grateful that you did that for us, Lord. Help us, Lord Jesus, to receive your word into ourselves so that it can change us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.